Daily Words of God Holding up God's words and being able to explain them unabashedly does not mean you are in possession of reality. Things are not as simple as you imagine. Whether you are in possession of reality is not based on what you say. Rather, it is based on what you live out. Only when God's words become your life and your natural expression can you be said to have reality. And only then can you be counted as having gained true understanding and actual stature. You must be able to withstand examination over long periods of time and you must be able to live out the likeness that is required by God. This must not be mere posturing. It must flow from you naturally. Only then will you truly possess reality. And only then will you have gained life. Let me use the example of the trial of the service doers, with which everyone is familiar. Anyone can offer the loftiest theories regarding service doers, and everyone has a decent understanding of the subject. They speak on it, and each speech surpasses the last, as if it were a competition. However, if man has not undergone a major trial, then it is very difficult to say that he has good testimony to bear. In short, man's living out is still very lacking, entirely contrary to his understanding. Therefore, it has yet to become man's actual stature, and it is not yet man's life. Because man's understanding has not been brought into reality, his stature is still like a castle built on sand, teetering and on the verge of collapse. Man possesses far too little of reality. It is almost impossible to find any reality in man. There is too little reality naturally flowing from man, and all the reality they live out has been forced. This is the reason I say man possesses no reality. Although people claim their love of God never changes, this is merely what they say before they have faced any trials. When they are suddenly faced with trials one day, the things that they speak of will once again fall out of step with reality. And this will again prove that man possesses no reality. It can be said that whenever you encounter things that do not fit with your notions and that require you to put yourself aside, those things are your trials. Before God's will is revealed, everyone goes through a rigorous test and an immense trial. Can you fathom this? When God wants to try people, he always allows them to make their choices before the actual truth has been revealed. This means that when God is subjecting man to trials, he will never tell you the truth. This is the manner in which people are exposed. This is one way that God carries out his work. To see whether you know the God of today, as well as whether you possess any reality. Are you truly free of doubts regarding God's work? Will you be able truly to stand firm when a major trial comes upon you? Who dares to say, I guarantee that there will be no problems? Who dares to assert, others might have doubts, but I never will. It is just as when Peter was subjected to trials. 
he always boasted before the truth had been revealed. This is not a personal flaw unique to Peter. This is the greatest difficulty currently facing every man. If I were to visit a few places or pay a visit to a few brothers and sisters to see what your understanding is of God's work of today, you would certainly be able to say much about your knowledge and you would seem not to have any doubts whatsoever. If I were to ask you, can you really determine that the work of today is performed by God himself without any doubt? You would certainly answer, without any doubt whatsoever, it is the work performed by the Spirit of God. Once you had answered in such a way, you surely would not feel a shred of doubt. And you would even feel quite pleased, thinking you had gained a bit of reality. Those who tend to understand things in this way are people who possess less reality. The more one thinks one has gained it, the less one will be able to stand firm when faced with trials. Woe to those who are arrogant and haughty, and woe to those who have no knowledge of themselves. Such people are adept at talking, yet fare the worst when putting their words into action. At the smallest sign of trouble, these people begin to have doubts, and the thought of quitting steals into their minds. They do not possess any reality. They merely have theories that are above religion, without any of the reality required now by God. I am most disgusted by those who only speak of theories without possessing any reality. They shout the loudest when carrying out their work, but as soon as they are faced with reality, they fall apart. Does this not show that these people have no reality? No matter how ferocious the wind and waves, if you can remain standing without allowing a shred of doubt to enter your mind and can stand firm and remain free from denial, even when there is no one else left, then you will be counted as having true understanding and genuinely in possession of reality. If you turn whichever way the wind blows, if you follow the majority and learn to parrot the speech of others, then no matter how eloquent you might be, it will not be proof that you possess reality. Therefore, I suggest that you not be premature in shouting out empty words. Do you know what God is going to do? Do not behave like another Peter, lest you bring shame upon yourself and lose the ability to hold your head high. That will not do anyone any good. Most people have no real stature. Though God has performed a great deal of work, He has not brought reality down upon people. To be more exact, He has never personally chastised anyone. Some people have been exposed by such trials, with their sinful hands reaching farther and farther out, thinking that it is easy to get the better of God, that they can do whatever they want. Since they are not able to withstand even this sort of trial, more challenging trials are out of the question for them, as is possession of reality. Are they not just trying to fool God? Possessing reality is not something that can be faked, nor is reality something that you can attain by knowing it. It depends on your actual stature as well as whether or not you can withstand all trials. Do you understand?